Well, hello, and welcome to the Skill Work Forum, where, as you know, we gather together and talk about things, challenges, issues around the skilled trades. Normally, I'm joined with my partner, Brett, who's not with us here today. So it's just me today, Tim Raglan, and one of the co-founders of Skill Work. Two very special guests we have with us today. Um, I want to introduce Dan Stinzi and Tim Lampros from America's Wall of Honor, a project that we are thrilled and honored to be a part of. Uh, we thought we would talk a little bit about our interaction, our relationship, and really a partnership that we're doing. So these gentlemen not only are creating an, an amazing piece of art, but they're creating something that takes a lot of skill and craftsmanship. And we are very honored to be partnered with them. You're actually not only friends, but uh, a customer of ours. We actually have a skilled <laughs> yeah. tradesman that's working with you guys. So we've gotten to know each other over the past several months. and. We thought this would be a great opportunity for you guys to talk about your project a little bit and how kind of your vision and our vision for America, American values uh, are so closely aligned. So Dan and Tim, maybe introduce yourself a little bit and talk about you guys and, and a little bit about the project. So, so Dan, maybe you can introduce yourself and Tim and you guys got a little bit of a connection that goes back a few years. Yeah, we do. <laughs> We've known each other our whole lives. Tim and I actually uh, grew up in upstate New York, and uh, we're actually first cousins because our moms are sisters. So uh, we've known each other since we were little kids, but as we grew up, we went different directions in the country. Different coasts. And uh, different <laughs> coasts even, yeah, that's right. And um, so um, I went on and became uh, an attorney. I was a pastor for a while decided that uh, I wasn't compassionate enough for that <laughs> and uh, I became an attorney but they thought Which I was a, requires no compassion at all well, but they thought I was a compassionate attorney so that <laughs> was, that was a switch yeah so uh, but Tim uh, actually went and joined the Air Force and uh, and he was a crash fire rescue uh, guy for the three different space shuttles yeah. and uh, and he came out of the Air Force and because he was trained as a paramedic then he became a firefighter paramedic. So Tim is both military and first responder. And I've been following his career because... Uh, <laughs> you make he, me laugh, Dan. <laughs> well, he, I, I've always been really impressed because uh, Tim got recruited. He had moved out to Illinois, but he got recruited uh, out to Los Angeles into the Hollywood industry and became a set medic and a, and a safety and director. That coming. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what a trend. So he yeah, was exactly. He was, you know, behind the scenes on Titanic, on Con Air, on X Files, on Twenty Four, all kinds of stuff. I'd watch the movie Alien, and if Sigourney Weaver was in the water, I knew that Tim was right next to her off camera, about this a, far apart, as her safety director. So uh, it was a very interesting, but. Because Hollywood is in such a place that you don't work, you know, you do a project and you're off for a while. Tim started working on steel art. And uh, I watched what he was doing from where I was out on the East Coast. And uh, he once did a, uh, a project for a precinct in LAPD that was expanding and, and remodeling their precinct. And uh, they said, can you do a work of art for us? And he said, well, let's make it more meaningful. Let's do it for the fallen officers that are in your precinct. And he took an LAPD badge and, and a huge thing and, and made it an honorary a memorial. Well, pretty soon all the big wigs from LAPD came to that event. And pretty soon he's doing memorial art all the way across. And then he, uh, that led to what's called the LAPD end of watch memorial wall. About the same size as the project we're working on now, about 55 feet by 10 feet. Pretty big. Pretty big. Yeah. And the art was the LAPD badge, the current badge, and then historic badges, and then the names of the 207 fallen officers in, in acrylic glass and so forth, and beautiful lighting. And um, so I was watching all that from a distance, and we would keep in touch once in a while. And uh, late 2018, uh, Tim uh, called me up and said, I'm going to do a new project. I've been designing this project. Is it that long? Ago? Called up, yeah, wow. it's been yeah. two years, two, almost three years now. Um, and he said, uh, and my background is in business and so forth, and I'm an entrepreneur besides being an attorney. So he knew I've had lots of businesses. And he said, would you uh, consider partnering with me on this project? Because when I did the end of Watch Wall, I had to do the business, the fundraising, the art, and it about killed me. I'd rather just do the art. And would you 
partner with me, become the CEO and do the business and the fundraising side of things. And so mm -hmm. I kind of jokingly said, yeah, I love what you do. I'm happy to do that. But number one, I'll never move to California. Boy, was that a good point. I, I, I said, I, I keep praying that it'll break off and float away, and it just doesn't. <laughs> and I said, not only that, but your studio is in Maxine Waters District, and you get protested whenever you do something nice for the police. Yeah. I said, so you're going to have to move the operation to Omaha. Yeah. Because here you'll be supported for patriotic stuff. I'll cut your overhead by about two thirds, which we did, and uh, and that brought Tim out here in early 2019 and started the America's Wall of Honor project. So, yeah, and and Tim, your your background is pretty fascinating. I mean, we we joke with each other because I've got a military background as well. I'm in the senior, more yeah, superior but, force, Navy. Right, that's a, uh, unbelievable that you consider that a real force. Yeah. <laughs> you're boating. So, yes. We're he, bo you're boating. That would be the Coast Guard, but no knock against that. So you guys out there that are vets, you, you, you know that we do this good-natured bantering. Love Tim, love what he's done for our country uh, in so many ways. But this, this project, America's Wall of Honor, we got connected because, you know, I know one of the guys that works here on the project mm -hmm. and we got this invitation to come to the first, you know, public showing of your first part of the wall. Right. We were blown away by it and we started connecting with you because what we do obviously is, you know, we, we have skilled craftsmen, skilled tradesmen that we send around the country. What you do is a combination of, you know, a trade, a craft, an art, all combined with the creativity. Yeah. So it's really, it's just an incredible um, effort that you put together here. So talk a little bit about what you do and how that involves, you know, actually uh, having a skill, a craft with art combined. Ooh, that's a, how to unpack that. I'd rather talk about Dan stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you talk, take it wherever you want, but I just find I, that fascinating. I will say some uh, following up on what Dan said. It was um, at the time I'm sitting here going, I've been in L.A. 30 years. I, am I really going to move to Omaha? I don't know if I've ever been there. I've maybe passed through. And in retrospect, you know, a lot of times I think this this project is providential because things have happened that just you can't explain it. How something like this, you know, I started in December 20, uh, 2016, started designing it. And uh, a couple of people asked me, you know, well, how's it going to get done? Because I won't accept money from government or anything. We, we, that limits what you can design and the vision. And so we raise our own funds. If it's good enough, people will, will support you. Yeah. And uh, looking back now, I, I would always say, I don't know how it's going to get done. I only know that it will be done. And uh, it's been a road, hasn't it? It's been a, an inspirational ro road, to tell you the truth, to look at, you know, you're doing your best and you can't solve something and a miracle comes along and solves it. Yeah. That's amazing. But um, getting back to the California thing, that was a, a miracle because I moved and l less than a year later, COVID hit and I would be in LA dead in the water. Yeah, I mean, just dead in the water. Right. And, this, and the project flourished because it got out of that environment. I love what you say about it being providential because, <clears throat> you know, one of our main core values, and we are very proud about that, we don't shy away from it as an honor to God in everything we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's putting him first. You know, it, it simply means doing the right thing the right way for the mm -hmm. right reasons. And, you know, definitely see providence in what's going on here. And maybe that's a big part of how we... You know, we feel like we're just kind of uh, just have this joint vision for what we want to do mm -hmm. and, our, and our separate businesses and vision. So here we are. We're, we're filming today in this studio, in this workshop uh, that Tim and Dan and their vision and their drive and just their uh, just refusal to say it can't be done. Right. And, refusal. <laughs> yes. And there's, we, there's no no. Yeah, there's no no. And I mean, I've seen this come together. The, the first event is called First Light, and you're, you're getting close to when it's gonna, the next big step's gonna happen. But we have a guy, you know, how we're practically connected is we've got, you know, Tim needs real people doing real work to make this project yes. happen. And we've been blessed to be able to allow one of our skill workers here, you can 
you can see Colby's uh, story, you know, on a different podcast, or uh, it, it's out there available for you. Maybe we'll link it here. But I just think it's so cool that we actually got a, a guy that we can practically put here in place and help help you guys in some small way. It's so interesting that you went down that road because um, the worker that you sent us, Colby. Uh, is more importantly than the right skills, is friendly and nice. Yeah, I don't care how highly skilled you are, if you're not friendly and nice, I don't want to work with you. You know, I don't want to be around you. Right. And he's a joy to be around. So he's got friendly and nice, even though he's a Marine. Yeah, Can I know. Can you believe He that? is a Marine, so. He, he's a Marine. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Well, I had to talk him into it, so I figured I had a better chance of well, a Marine. I yeah. told him there was free food, and he just went for it. <laughs> well, <laughs> there is free food. It's not free, but, it, but we pay for it. Yeah, right. But um, he's, uh, he's what I call a PDF. I, I let that out earlier today. And uh, do you know what a PDF is? Uh, only in the sense of the document type. Okay. So, do, yeah. <laughs> he's a professional direction follower which is far more important than any skill that you come with. It's great that you have skills and it's great that you're friendly and nice, but if you follow directions, you're gonna gain skill and you're gonna gain knowledge and you're gonna gain the ability to excel in, in what somebody's doing because if they're giving you directions and you're following it, you're learning how they need it done. And this is a unique very unique. A unique skilled area because it's not, it's not a factory manufacturing things. It's an actual work of art. And so what happens is nobody else has done this before. There's no other project going on right now in the, in the country like this. And so- it's not the world. Or the, yeah, probably unique in the world. Um, and just as a description to give you the overview, the wall itself, America's Wall of Honor, is about 57 feet long and about 10 feet high. But what it has on it is this, the official seals of the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, has the presidential seal for the uh, Commander-in-Chief, Coast Guard, National Guard, and then one for fire and rescue, and one for law enforcement. Now, just to give you an example, the presidential seal, which was lit up back in May, 607 laser-cut pieces are in that seal in 17 layers of steel, uh, powder coated for color, welded, mounted on three layers of acrylic glass with LED lighting embedded. And so the problem is, unlike manufacturing, if you're, if you're making gears for a combine and one of them breaks, it's no big deal. But here, if one of those 607 pieces breaks, you've got to go back to the laser cutter and start over again. And it's just very unique. And that's why when Tim talks about professional direction followers, it's like, okay, they could have been working in a factory or working on steel their whole life, but when they come in, they can't do it the same way. Right. And it's so unique. it's just a very unique project. So. Yeah, and I, I hope we get a chance to maybe put some of that, the, the images of those things. I saw that presidential seal. It's incredible. I, I don't know, if you have to see it in person. You do. And, and we'll get to that, because that's gonna be, you're gonna have a chance to see that. It's coming to a state near you in the, in the, in the not too distant future, this thing's gonna go on the road. It's pretty incredible being created here in Omaha in this, in this studio and it's gonna go around the country. So you talk about, you know, I needed a professional direction follower. And the cool thing about, you know, just to connect a little bit about what we do and we try to do is when we, when we work with somebody is, what do you need? You know, what do you need for your culture? Well, that's what we needed. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. It's because everything's different and every need is different. So, you know, it's just been cool for us to be part of that. But I really want to want to hear more about, you know, the, the the actual, you know, wall of honor, what you're doing, Tim, you know, kind of where it is in the in the production or development phase, uh, construction phase, as my mind thinks about. And, you know, what's coming up for you guys? Okay, well, um... Uh, like I said before, I started in December of 2016 design, because design is everything. I'm, if I'm unique in anything, it's unique that I will envision something. Then I'll design it on the computer, CAD, and then I'll design the mechanics of it. Because just because this is, looks this way, especially when you get into stuff that's heavy, 
you know, that presidential seal, I remember when we put that out for the first time. Woo, that's scary. How much does that thing weigh, you think? We don't know for sure, but (laughs) probably in the, you know, weighs more than a big Harley. Put it that way. Hanging on the wall that's screaming to fall. You know, and I have uh, 12 rods that go all the way through it that anchor it. And for me as the artist, what I get a jazz jazzed about is going, you know, the engineering. Because I, I don't know engineering. I just guess at it, really. <laughs> and uh, I guess well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so... Engineers out there are cringing. You know, I know anybody? they're cringing, <laughs> but I also... I have common sense. Sure. And I know that seven, 800 pounds going down the road quickly becomes 5,000 pounds bouncing. So I over-engineer something. And I'm sure if an engineer came, they'd go, look, Tim, you don't need that much. You know, and they'd say, this is what you really need. Well, okay, so I do the, the conceptual imagery of it. Then I design that imagery into what the pieces and parts of how it looks. And then I sit down and say, okay, I have to engineer that together. How does that go together? And there's limitations to that because you're, we use predominantly 12 gauge and some 10 gauge uh, 304 stainless steel for the seals. And that has weight to it. It has thickness to it. It has uh, a texture. It has, it has properties that you want to enhance or limit it has uh, reflections and non reflect A lot goes into that. I have to imagine how that looks, and then I have to engineer it going together. Right. Well, then there's another thing that I, you know, Dan goes, I'll say, Dan, I got to create these cut files. And so then he just disappears because then I, <laughs> I have to take all that and say, okay, the language for the laser cutter to cut it, I have to transfer all that into that. So that's a whole nother level. And then it comes in. And the, you know, a lot of artists will say I conceptualize something and they may design it, but then they go to a shop that's building it. Well, if I took this to a shop, they'd say, you're crazy. We're not going to do this. This is, <laughs> we couldn't charge you enough. Yeah, I've seen that, you know, just from a layman's perspective. I've seen the parts in various stages, been blessed to be able to see this thing at various stages. And I mean, to me, it looks like just a, a bunch of, Cut up pieces of raw stainless steel, yeah, and then when you see the finished product, and it's, it's not like a four or five. La- it's m- hundreds of pieces, six hundred, hundreds and, and hundreds. hundreds. It's incredible. And if one's off a little, it will not, not go together. I tell the staff all that they go, hey, Tim, this isn't going together. I said, then it's not right because it will go together. Now, sometimes out of all that, even I have to go back, ooh, I did that 18 months ago. Let's go look at the design. And we'll say, oh, that one out of 100 pieces that are in a wing, we flipped it over. We'll flip it back. Oh, now it fits. That's so, crazy. And then there's, so I get it, roll up my sleeves. I do all the TIG welding. And that's unique because I've had professional welders come in and look at this and go, well, I'm not doing that. There's no way. <laughs> you know, but the big stuff I may not be that good at because I'm down here in jeweler's level. And that's where I excel because that's what I've been doing for years. So I've seen other professional welders say, how do you do that without just melting the piece you're working on totally out of existence? <laughs> oh, some of the welding of the studs comes down to a tenth of a second. One, because you use both hands and your foot. I don't know if you know that. It's a gas pedal that modulates the power. And then the torch, which has the gas and the heat, and then the actual metal you're melting. So some of these pieces are on an edge, and the power on that, in a tenth of a second, it just ate the piece. It's gone. That's incredible to me, because it's, you know, it's, it's both artistic, but it's also the skill in that. And High so I have a hard time that. using a fork and knife together. You wouldn't be you a know? good welder. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be a good welder <laughs> at all. You might be a good sander. <laughs> yeah, well, And we maybe. do a lot of sanding. Maybe. Because we're sculpting. Uh, the, the pieces go together and they have, you know, the, the crafts people that will come in. Well, what edge do you want on this? Because everything's square, oh, edge-wise. And so, it can't be. And so we do a tremendous amount of, of, uh, 
of sanding, I'm actually wearing my Merca hat because Merca is one of our sponsors. I don't know if I can say that while you're a sponsor too. Of course. They are terrific. Thank you, Merca. <laughs> they provide a massive amount of sandpaper for us. That's incredible. And you've got a lot of partners, you know, yes. that, that we consider our friends in this as well. <clears throat> That's just been cool to me that a lot of these companies uh, represent tool companies that our guys use. They represent companies that we support. Yeah. So, you know, even though that this wall is designed for, you know, America's heroes in the military and first responders, um, the skilled tradesmen and craftsmen, they're really a very much uh, similar to that because they built this country. You know, I mean. Absolutely. It, it wouldn't be here, period. Bricklayers. Cement people that work on with cement in the winter, you know, you're driving by and there's two feet of snow and you're raw and warm in your car and it's five degrees. They're, they're out there troweling the cement. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> to, and the city workers that are, hey, we broke a main at Sunday at seven o'clock at night and in a blizzard. All right, well, so we gotta go fix it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. This last year with COVID, I think people really begin to understand what really is critical and what isn't. Because the things that were keeping open for you know critical infrastructure were not baristas at Starbucks. No offense, they were the guys that were keeping manufacturing yeah, companies truckers. and truckers rolling and those mechanics. Kind of so I thought it would be good for us because, like again, what's the connection? Just to make it clear, at Skillwork we have three core values, and it's honor to God, it's respect and value to skilled tradesmen, and it's look for an opportunity every day to unpack somebody's life in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And Dan and I were just talking earlier about how. That's America, right? Yeah, that's what I told him. I said, well, your core values are actually American core values. And that's how, yeah. the co if you go back to our founding fathers, all of those values were there. Yeah. Now, a lot of them have disappeared, but that's, that's where we are. And so part of what we're doing on tour that starts next year is we also have an education center. And we have a mobile museum, a thousand square foot double expandable trailer. Because this is a work of art. But Tim and I have a, a common uh, desire to see art get better again in, in this country. A lot of it has turned into just hateful stuff and nasty stuff. And uh, we're, we're fans of art that is uplifting spiritually, intellectually, emotionally. Uh, we like realist art that you can look at a picture and know what it, it. know what it actually is. Yeah. And uh, the beauty of America, all those different things. And... Of course, the biggest piece of art that we'll have traveling to the museum is the one that's in a separate two tractor trailers. Uh, but we're also going to have an education center. Uh, for adults, we're going to emphasize education on post-traumatic stress because that's big not only in the military but also with first responders. Yep. And uh, we're going to try to raise funds for those companies that work specifically with post-traumatic stress victims. Um, and then for the kids... We basically are going to have teachers that travel with us. Uh, picture an 80 foot by 120 foot tent, which will be our education center. And there'll be a, an art center for kids where they can come in and do art projects that are patriotic, take them home with them. Then education where the little kids can be read to, but there'll be read books about America, patriotism, the constitution, real capitalism, history. real history, true history. Um, and and that's that's going to go on, and and we're going to try to keep them from being indoctrinated into crazy stuff, and just study what how America started, yeah, and what America is really about. So, our core values are the same as your core values. Uh, let's honor God. Let's honor the people that have built America, and uh, let's help other people. And that's yeah. that's what we're all about. So. Yeah, and I think that probably explains why we're so you know, joined at the hip with our vision and passion. And, you know, even though what you guys do is, is incredible, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's different. We're on the same vector, you know, we're heading oh, yeah. in the same direction. So we're just uh, thrilled to be part of this and you got some big milestones coming up and, you know, some things you want to do in the future. And we want, we just want to make an opportunity to talk a little bit about what's coming up here in the near future and, and what's going on. And maybe if anybody really is inspired by this, and wants to be like skill work and excuse me, but like skill work and be involved with this, we're going to provide, you know, some opportunity here at the bottom of this podcast to, to get a hold of these guys. But what's coming up, you know, near term, Dan, and you know, in the future and where this thing is going, this, this amazing thing that, that you guys are putting together here. Well, the next big event is on Veterans Day, November 11th. 
That's why I got to cut this short. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but you know, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's less. It's thirty days. Thirty days. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have COVID, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you just got choked up by knowing you're thirty days to the yeah, next I big did, event. A panic attack. When you come back in here, you'll say. Thirty days ago, this did not look like it was ready. Yeah. So what happens is what we call a first light ceremony. So back in May was the first light of the center section of the wall, the presidential seal. In November 11th, we're lighting up two more sections of the wall. And the seals for Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps will all be finished, will all be revealed with a ceremony that's very moving, video, music, and so forth. We'll have an honor guard. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem. Have a lot of guests of honor. In fact, our governor's coming to this. Um, and uh, General Michael Flynn is going to be a speaker and former national security advisor. So that's a big event um, that's coming up. There'll be a luncheon that day. Um, in fact, Skillwork is helping to sponsor that luncheon. So thank you for that. Of course. Where we're inviting 200 veterans to come to lunch here and, uh, and have some commanding officers like General Flynn, General Don Bacon, speak to them about uh, about their service. And, um, and so uh, we have sponsors that are paying for the tables so that the veterans don't have to pay to come to the luncheon. Yeah. So that's, that's very cool. Uh, but the big event that um, Tim can't even think about yet because <laughs> of November 11th is the next five years. Next spring, we're going to be starting a five-year tour. It's going to hit all 50 states. And uh, it's going to be huge. We're going to have a big road crew. We're going to have lots of tractor trailers, lots of. Wow. So, you know, that's on the fundraising side, which is by pressure. Uh, that's where we need some big donors is to, to help buy all those tractor trailers and help pay for the crew. And we were just talking this. about, you know, the crew, CDL drivers, guys to set this up. So yeah. if you're out there, you know, you're a skilled tradesman, um, obviously, We'd love to, you know, talk to you at skill work, but maybe this is something you want to get involved with down the road. They're going to need people that have a joint vision for the passion of doing this. It's going to take guys that know how to put stuff together to move stuff around. I can give you an idea of somebody we could start looking for now. Sure. Okay. Imagine this wall is done. Yeah. Somebody eight, nine hours a day, every time that this wall's out, does nothing but clean it. That may be not quite what we do, uh, but I bet there is somebody out there like that. But we're talking, talk about skill yeah. and knowledge. Yeah, that's almost like a, uh, a curator. Somebody it's something that to it's that. It's like a white glove. They job. would yeah. really need to know the ins and outs of all this. And I haven't even told this. I'm Dan. This I'm. I'm starting to go. Well, that, that's a unique person. Yeah. You found us, Colby. Yeah, I know. He's unique. Yeah, and Colby is our guy working here. So another another thing that is going to be necessary on the road that some of your workers may be interested in is we're going to have to have security uh, because there are people tearing down monuments and memorials yeah. and attacking them. And if they come after something that costs $2 million to build, um, that's dangerous. Well, it's a one-of-a-kind piece of art. So you guys have a tremendous amount of challenges. You've got a, a short timeline. I'm going to be excited to be here on the 11th. The veteran today is really an important mm -hmm. day to me on a number of fronts. Uh, we're super thrilled to be friends with you guys and partners Likewise. in this project. Same with us. We're excited to see where it's going forward. And, you know, I mean, even though this may have been a little bit off our normal topic, it really isn't because underneath what we do, what these guys do, it's why we do it. And why we do it is because we believe in this country. We believe on the values that it was developed by. We believe in you, the skilled craftsman out there that builds, repairs, installs, creates the things that gets, get, makes America work. So we're grateful to all of you. We're grateful for um, Dan and Tim for joining us here today. It's always super, fun. Super yeah. thrilled about this thing. As you can tell, I'm really excited about it. And we're grateful for the time that you had to share with us today. Um, again, if, if you're a, a business, maybe you're looking at this and you're thinking maybe Skillwork can help them, reach out to us, skillwork.com. We'd love to, to help you. Uh, at least talk to you about your issues and challenges moving forward with skilled tradesmen. And by all means, if the project uh, has, you know, maybe inspired you to think a little bit about getting involved in something that, that's just Americana at its roots, reach out to these guys. I know they'd, they'd love to hear from you. So until next time, thank you for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Appreciate thank you for watching. It.